Hello and welcome to this review of my Chaconi 5981. It's nice to pull out this old girl again. Every time I give her a spin, she pleasantly surprises me. I regularly rotate between my keyboards and the old 5981 never disappoints. This is one of the first boards I got when I got into the hobby, and I think the second one I bought after my Dell 8101, which in fact is this exact one. I read about its switches, which were said to be smooth and crisp, and it certainly lived up to it. The switches are SMK second generation switches of the clicky variety, with Alps mount sliders. These are pretty easy to recognize by the faint blue color of the slider, and they're commonly known as Monterey switches because they were first reported in a Monterey K104. It should be noted that Monterey probably had nothing to do with these switches though, as the keyboard appears to be an SMK OEM product. The switches are designed partly like Blue Alps, for which they're sometimes mistaken, but they have plenty of character of their own and they certainly don't feel the same. They use a click leaf like Alps, but it's a very different one which imparts a different feel and sound. It also uses bare metal contact consisting of a bizarre bent wire and a flippy post arrangement, which is absolute fucking hell on a cocktail stick to put back together after you've opened it up I should add. Unlike Alps switches which use a pre-packaged contact sandwich known as a switch plate which is very easy to handle, and unlike Monterey's, Alps switches also don't need desoldering before they can be opened. The feel is very legit though, at about 60 grams of force these are a little lighter than Alps switches and only a little bit stiffer than Cherry MX Blue, it's barely noticeable. They have a very nice sharp clean tactile bump and a crisp very smooth feel which is partly due to the fact that these came with lubricant out of the factory. It's delightful and it's one of the very few instances in which a switch actually radically changes my typing behavior. In this case it makes me type extremely softly and delicately, it's really nice and relaxed. So softly in fact that after I first used it for a while I had difficulty switching back to the stiffer Alps switches for a few days because I was pushing the keys too softly. I've never had that problem before or since. Although they make a pretty good sound as well, of course you can't beat the king of typing sounds, it doesn't sound as good as even white Alps. It sounds softer, thinner and higher pitched while Alps sound fuller, deeper and bassier and Blue Alps even more so than these white ones. Still, the Monterey's make a nice noise, it's pleasant to listen to, but Alps are just unmatched in this regard. Monterey's do age, or at least tolerate wear and contamination, better than Alp switches though. Alps tend to get really upset and become very scratchy as soon as they get even just near any amount of dirt, but Monterey's aren't quite as bad. Between this used keyboard and this new old stock Monterey K110 I reviewed a while ago for example, there's really not a significant difference in key feel, whereas with Alps it would probably be much more noticeable. As for the feel, I think it's smoother and crisper than white Alps, but not quite as nice or refined as blue Alps. There's nothing to be ashamed of though that puts these babies at A tier as far as I'm concerned. Like I said, I'm never disappointed when I pull out this old Goldie. One thing that does disappoint every time however is the build quality. Although Monterey's were used in a variety of keyboards, like most switches were at the time, basically all boards that came with them were built about as well as a hobo's cardboard home. It's very thin, hollow and plasticky and it's probably only because of its considerable size and metal mounting plate that it reaches the 1.4 kilo mark, which is admittedly a respectable weight. The top part of the case is screwed together but the bottom part is held together by plastic clips and on this one the clips on both corners have broken off, which is a good demonstration of why your keyboard shouldn't be held together by clips. The keyboard also flexes pretty terribly and it creaks and groans like an old hag if you do, and honestly it just feels like a bit of a wet newspaper. It does have nice two-part flip-out feet so you can choose your elevation, 
and it has a cable gutter, although the fit is too loose for it to really work. But in terms of structural toughness, it's poop on a stick. The Monterey K110 I showed earlier isn't exactly built like a tank either, but it's definitely built better than this. Apart from that this does have a mounting plate, this is the level of build quality you'd expect of a cherry keyboard for fuck's sake. One thing that sets the 5981 apart from other keyboards with Monterey switches is that as far as I know it's the only one young enough to have come with Windows keys. This one is from late September of 1996 and apart from broken clips it's thankfully still in very good condition. The caps are also kind of crap by the way, they're thin lasered ABS and although it uses a nice font they don't feel or look particularly high quality. Furthermore, the bottom row is a little non-standard, with a mysteriously enlarged menu key, which might make it a bit hard to find replacements for. Also, it comes with a big ass enter, which is great, but unfortunately Ciccone chose to make space for it by shortening the backspace key, which was a carryover from the earlier AT layout. This shortened backspace is, in a word, bollocks. Really bleh. So yeah, the case might be a sploogy turd and the caps are only a little bit better, but overall the quality of the switches is what shines through for me, and it's enough to still make it a very nice board, at least to use. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.